Yep. Then, uh, oh, you didn't give me much. Okay, thanks Helen. Um, good afternoon. Uh, we're on item number two, policy on appointment and remuneration for uh, directors. Um, thank you, Your Worship. My apologies for lateness. I was just making sure I got the following resolutions sorted for you. Um, so we talked this morning in a workshop about the importance of the policy on appointment and remuneration of directors and, and what the different elements of that are. Um, and essentially the purpose is around transparency and, transparency and accountability. And we've already had some conversations about um, how we plan to apply this policy for some vacancies that are, um, we've become aware of. Um, so um, this policy is, um, apart from some small tidying, is identical to the policy Council's had for some years now. Um, so I'm happy to take any questions on it. Okay, well, um, <coughs> Members uh, have read through the policy. Do we have any questions or queries to Helen regarding the... Well, we've got a suggested resolution there on item two. Council adopts the policy appointment and the remuneration of directors. Can I have a mover for that, please? Councillor Park, seconded by Councillor Hickling. All those in favour, please say aye. 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 Sorry. I'm just wondering whether yeah. I'm on something that I... Should be on. It's to do with the which uh, Councillor Parks just gave me is the community health forum. A am I missing it? Am I, I'm a slow reader. Is, is it on the sheet? Is that one this, of my, is just, um, this is just a remuneration. Directors. Yeah, yeah. So the, the item three. Yeah. Okay. So item number three. Um. Thank you, Your Worship. Um. So council committees. Um. First of all, we have to do is create these um, the committees of council for your, the structure um, that you're um, planning to operate for the next triennium, and then adopt the terms of reference, which, as we've talked about, kind of sets the the powers and scope and limits on how those committees operate. And then, um, as part of that process, then make sure that we um, elect or appoint people to those committees. Um, we talked this morning about council having a range of different kinds of committees: We've got standing committees, special committees. Um, and the joint committees, um, as well as a couple of um, statutory committees that operate under different legislation, the licensing committee and the community board. For now, we're dealing with the um, primary committees of council. Um, following a workshop this morning, um, it was requested that we change the terms of reference for the audit and risk committee to increase the meeting frequency to um, quarterly and more as required. Um, so we have a resolution for you that um, captures that amendment. And then um, what I've put in front of you is um, a proposed resolution that captures um, the flavour of your conversations this morning around who gets appointed where. So, um, okay, so this is the item marked number three with some yellow highlighting all over it. It's just been tabled. Everyone got that okay? All right, you've got some suggested names on there. Um, should we just take a couple of minutes to make sure that um, everyone's happy? Okay, thanks, Helen. I think you've done pretty well during your lunch break. Thank you. All that together. Um, yeah, do we have any queries or questions on the the tabled um, suggested resolution there? 
Councillor Truman. I, w- I looked at that and I, wonder, I did wonder. Sorry, oh, Rosie. Councillor, my apologies. Rosie Ann. <laughs> okay, so that's good, Helen. Could I um, suggest a uh, mover uh, or someone? Councillor Hackley? Yeah. Councillor by, uh, seconded by Councillor Jollins. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Those against, carried. Item number four. Right. Item number four is about um, the new rules that the Remuneration Authority um, is operating with local authorities um, around pay for councillors. This specifically is around um, additional pay for chairs of council committees or councillors who have um, substantially larger roles than their peers. Um, there's a bunch of criteria that the Remuneration Authority will be looking at to work out whether or not it will agree to additional remuneration. Um, and it's really going to be looking for evidence of significant and an ongoing um, extra workload. It will be looking at things like the position, the additional responsibilities, um, the benefits to ratepayers, the estimate of extra time, and also the relative job sizes. Um, I've put in front of you um, two possible resolutions. One is that you resolve to make no proposals to the Remuneration Authority, which is that you basically agree to forego the additional um, $40,000 of remuneration. Um, or that you may wish to um, provide some percentage of remuneration, which can't be more than 25%, for the chairs of some committees. Um, I'm aware that in the workshop this morning, the, the view was broadly that um, you felt that it would not be appropriate to um, seek additional pay at this stage. Thanks, Ellen. Yeah, no, I'd, I'd uh, reiterate that. Um, I don't think there's an appetite out there for any wage increases, you know, certainly in the general market, um, uh, things are pretty tough and people uh, are struggling out there, so I don't think we should be taking advantage of any uh, particular increase that could be available to us. So uh, I would certainly suggest that there's um, uh, no cause for additional remuneration. Um, but could I have any comments? I would move to further the debate that uh, the first resolution be moved. Yes, thanks. Uh, it's been uh, moved there. That's the Council resolved to make no proposals. The remuneration authority for additional remuneration mm -hmm. and seconded by Councillor Hickling. Could I? All those in favour, please say aye. aye. Those against, carry. Item number five Turangi Tongadero Community Board, terms of reference. Yes, Your Worship. Um, in fact, the point about the terms of reference is that Council doesn't make the terms of reference for the Community Board, they set their own. Um, because they're a separate entity um, under the Local Government Act. However, Council does delegate some powers to the Community Board and that's really what this item is, is addressing um, for you. Um, page 5 bar 4 has the delegations to the Community Board and you'll see they're very broad in terms of the Board being delegated um, functions, duties and powers of Council that are relevant to and within its ward. Um, and Essentially, that the the ward um, has the power, and in fact is required to um, make, if it wants to um, make a recommendation on a proposal that involves unbudgeted expenditure, they would then they can't just kind of make a decision all by themselves because the community board has no separate budget for its activities. Um, council provides the administrative support for that board to meet. Council provides the funding for um, the community board's remuneration. Um, but the board itself does not have an operational budget other than any specific monies council votes for it. Um, so, yeah, you might want to um, delegate some authority and then they can get underway as well. Okay. Any discussion there? Councillor Stewart? I'd just like to move the motion. Move to uh, Councillor Stewart. Seconded by Councillor Cousins. All those in favour, please say aye. 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 Yes, carried. Yeah. Item number six. And you have tabled here uh, the various appointees to organisations. Yes, can I just bring your attention to item 11, which is not correct. Um, the draft resolution for this um, appointment says, it should say, elect councillors John Bodie and Kirsty Truman. Body, my apologies.
Right, so this is for the appointments to a whole range of council organisations um, and community organisations that council, um, for a range of reasons, is involved with. Um, we've workshopped these this morning in terms of doing the review of stri um, the strategic review of these to ensure that this is an appropriate list of organisations. And um, in discussions, this is the kind of list we've come up with around appointments. I'd just like to say there were a couple of appointments where it was suggested that we make two appointments rather than one because of the high level of interest among councillors for those roles. Um, now, those two organisations were the Waiora Community Trust and Bike Topol. We were unable to get hold of somebody with sufficient decision making. Oh, no. Uh, yes, Your Worship. I just um, would like to say that um, I think it's great that Waiora Community Trust has so many people that want to be involved, but it is all about the big picture, and I'm sure we're all here for the bigger picture. And I'm quite happy to step down and let Councillor Jollins take that uh, council observer role on the Waiora Community Trust and just um, be able to assist in, in other ways if that makes um, making the resolution any easier, it's fine. And the same with Bike Topo, um, with Councillor Craig. Um, I was approached by Bike Topo to um, if, about being int if, if I'd like to uh, be on their committee, and of course I'm keen to get involved in anything. But again, I'm quite happy to act as a, an alternative or, uh, to the deputy mayor um, if if there's more of an appetite for that rather than them expanding their committees, which probably have a fair number on already. I guess um, you know, uh, we could delay those and just until we do get an answer back because we have a meeting on the 26th of November. Um, so is it imperative we, we resolve on those, particular why we're on house and bike tower today? Because... Uh, Waipahihi, I haven't been able to get hold of the uh, Botanical Society, so I just needed to get that name for you as well. So the Waipahihi one we've held over, I've got a batch of appointments we still need to do. Um, could I suggest for Waiora House and Bike Topol, given that both are recipients of grant funding from Council and, and grant Council support in a range of ways, um, one of the things I would suggest is that they'd be unlikely to reject increased Council involvement given the, um, the financial support they get. But the alternative would be that, if you wish, we can carry on with the resolution as it is, and if, um, for any reason, they signal that they would rather not have two people, we could revisit it at that point. So that's another way through it, but we can do it whichever way you prefer. Okay. Um, any other suggestions? Oh, just, in, in, just in saying that, then, with the um, Waiora Community Trust number 16, could I just have it noted that my surname has... Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry. Right. So I can get it out there. I don't mind. <coughs> um, okay. So any more? Any more? So we have got another batch to come through. We will resolve on these today, and then if it needs to be adjusted later on, we can adjust them. So, okay. You've got the list there. Uh, suggested resolution. Yeah, that we appoint, uh, make these appointments. Um, can I have a mover? Moved by Councillor Hickling, seconded by Councillor Body. All those in favour, please say aye. aye. Right, item number <coughs> 10. Mr Lewis. <coughs> Your Worship, good afternoon, Mr. Lewis. Good afternoon. Uh, we have here a tender for the road marking um, contract. Um, I would like to um, have the report tabled as read. Okay. Do we have any questions on the on the road marking contract, Council Body? Just just two questions, uh, Your Worship. Firstly, it's the one in regards to um, 
has been carried out in accordance with the council's procurement policies, which I'd like to know what they are. The second issue is how much of the subsidy of that 600,000 are we looking at? That's fully subsidised. So the, the 43% cost to the council is 600,000. Uh, the cost to council would be 57% of that. So around. That's my question. Yep. 43%. So 57% of the 600 is what we're liable as a council. 57% is what we would be required to pay, and 43% would be NZTA. Around 350,000. Yeah. Roughly. The procurement policy. And the procurement policy. Um, the procurement policy sets out um, limits when we need to publicly tender. Um, also um, sets out limits within the Chief Executive's authority. Um, and at 250,000, we have sought open tender and brought it to council for your approval. Could you just, sorry, uh, yep. could you just run past your answer again as to is there a certain amount that can be done without having to go to the tender? Is that where that quarter of a million comes in in regards to the CEO? What's the. The quarter of a million is the CEO's delegated authority. Um, the tender policy currently stands, I think it's at 100,000 for. Publicly tendered. Thank you. I may well have questions a little bit later on yep. as time goes on. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you. I just noticed, um, Dennis, excuse me if this is just me, but usually when we have a, um, a tender process up, up you know, um, there is usually an engineer's estimate or some, some sort of technical um, Amount for us to gauge it against? I'm, is it me or have I missed that somewhere? Or I'm just wondering where that is in this agenda item. Uh, I know when I actually opened the tenders and the engineer's estimate was actually on the on the tenders, so it it, it was somewhere. I, I, I believe the engineer's estimate seven hundred thousand. It was right. somewhere. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so you, right. yeah yep. Usually, it's normally it is. Right. Yes. 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 It has been omitted in an era. Yes. Okay. Right. Yeah. okay. So they did definitely did do one. Yep. I've seen it. Yep. Okay. So we just have a take note of that. Um, any other queries on the? Um, I just had a question, Dennis. Um, were there any conflicts of interest identified during the tender process? And if no. So, no, that would be no, there was none. Just a follow-up question, Your Worship. This money would have been budgeted in either the long-term or annual plan? Correct. Which one? The annual. 13, 14 oh. annual plan. Yep. Yes. Uh, yes, Your Worship. Just a question. Look, I'm, I'm a new councillor. Just in regards to the tender process, and I haven't read the manual, so I don't know. From a real estate background, which I'm myself and uh, Rosie Harvey are from, the tender process doesn't normally mean that you're going to accept that tender. It's always something for further negotiation. Does it ever happen when you receive the lowest tender? Does someone from council say, yes, we'll look at that, but shave this off it or give us that? Does that ever happen? In some instances, yes, that does happen. Um, typically, why not, why not in all instances? I suppose that's why I'm asking that. Because even if it's five thousand here or ten thousand here, that's money we could be saving. Um, the tenders are, are let on the open market. I understand. So they're, that. They're, that's what we're saying is we don't we don't negotiate them once they come back. Typically, no. Okay. Food for thought for the future. Perhaps provide some further advice on that, Dennis, because uh, the tender process is tends to revolve around a schedule of rates rather than the actual works that are being conducted. So it's not a case of identifying that these works will be done with that tender. It's more that the, the rates will apply to the works that. That is correct. Would you yes. be able to expand on that? <coughs> yep. Again? So w with something like the road maintenance or the road marking contract, we have a, a fairly extensive schedule of, of road marking right throughout the district. Um, and the tenderers submit rates for those those centre lines, edge lines, that type of thing, replacement of RPMs, and then we um, 
manage or maintain or monitor the condition of that, and so they do X number of kilometres and they, we use those rates. So we, we, can, we manage the, the funding, if you like, for that work by the amount of work that they actually do. But we still say that we could trim those tenders further if we so wished. <sighs> That's for future discussion, I'm just saying. I think you've got to maintain a certain amount of professionalism too, don't you? They don't want to be the cuts or the, the sort of, yeah. Appreciate where you come in. Your Worship, could I follow up on that? Uh, the question that's been raised by Councillor Cousins is a very important one. There was a long pause when that question was just asked a second ago, because if there's going to be shaving off any tender, that shaving must take place of all tenders. So the tenderers in a tender all get the right to come back again or not? Because isn't that one of the issues that faced us with what we are just discussing in, in workshop this morning in regards to the risk management and things like that. So I think we need a very, very clear answer what ac actually happens during a tendering process. I'm, I'm quite happy to... A tender, there's a tender, tendering policy? Yep, I'm, I'm quite happy to answer that. There is a... Within the um, tendering, you set out in the request for tender what the procedure you will follow. Um, it is not normal to go then go back to one tenderer and seek to shave some money off that one. Um, if you change the scope of the work, you're obliged to go back to other tenderers and give them equal opportunity to, if there's a change in the scope of the work. Uh, could I follow up, Your Worship? Has that always happened in the past? We haven't um, negotiated tenders. We've accepted the tender as they've submitted, unless there's been a need to change the scope of the work. Question was, has that happened in the past? No. For that particular tender, no. You have the opportunity of tendering for other work as it arises. Um, on that. I just got... No, no move yet. So we've got a suggested resolution there that they tend to be awarded to the Roadrunner Marcus. Moved by Councillor Crate, seconded by Councillor Stewart. Councillor Stewart, thank you. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Those against, carried. Item number 11.